In the previous video, I created a digital asset that we use a file pattern to load files into Unreal. So first of all, I need to delete our old glyphs. Let's select all of these. And I'm actually going to delete our cliff generator HDA because I'm going to use this new digital asset instead. I've deleted the geometry from the scene, but I just need to delete these old static meshes because we could update them. There we go. Just save our project. And import that new digital asset. PDG file pattern. And we can add this to the scene. If a Houdini session doesn't start right away, we can do that from the Houdini engine menu. Let's create session. And our Houdini engine is started and the PDG is ready. Let's scroll down. We have our top network for our file pattern. And the top node that we're baking is the HE out. And here are our parameters. We have our directory string, which is set to our source content folder, where we have our landscape cliff tiles. And we have that file button that we specified. And currently, if I was to hit bake, I would load in all the files that are in the folder 0000. zero. I'm going to check auto bake and then come down to our file pattern string and replace these zeros with an asterisk. So this is going to load any file that's in our zero cliff tile split directory in all of our subfolders. Auto bake is checked, cook output and bake. So we have 415 items, 415 work items, and that's 415 files that are going to be imported. Let's bring up the task manager so I keep an eye on our memory usage and then click load work item objects to begin importing the new cliff tiles. Whilst that's importing, I've sped up the video so we haven't got to watch it import in real time. It took about an hour and a half to load in all of the geometry. It does almost max out my RAM usage, and if it had, Unreal would likely have crashed, but fortunately that didn't happen. If you have less memory than I have, I have 64 gigabytes, so if you're less than that, you might find you need to work at lower subdivision levels. But also I find that Unreal you holds can a lot use of data in memory even after it's finished importing cliffs in batches. And actually restarting and in the Unreal next video, would I'll free up a lot of that memory. The so further on in the video, batches, I'll demonstrate importing to avoid batches, running out of memory. Because I wanted to use Nanite and you push it as much as possible, the memory usage, that meant and if the memory tackling starts some of these high memory creep issues. up and you've almost but if used you it all using up, more of a you can restart Unreal, then you could probably use that memory much more subdivisions. And, and then continue to rely more on adding detail through textures and materials. So it looks like these have finished importing now. Our memory almost did max out um, at one point, but uh, fortunately Unreal didn't crash. Currently I can't see any cliffs in the scene. That's because currently they're um, hidden. That's because... I had work item output files visible unchecked. So it loaded in the work items, but but kept them hidden. So let's unhide this folder. There we can see our cliffs. This is important cliffs for the entire island. Select them, then we'll see them all outlined. And there we go.
We've got cliffs for some of our large sections, and these have been split up into separate tiles. And then we've also got cliffs for some of our smaller sections. We've, we've got a few gaps where that delete threshold could maybe be reduced a bit further, but obviously that would give us even more geometry to import. But I think we were found a kind of nice, happy medium between total number of cliffs and subdivision levels that we didn't run out of uh, computer resources when importing them. Let's just look at the task manager. And you can see I've still got a lot of memory in use. So I'm going to restart Unreal. Let's just first save the project, save all. And then when that's finished saving, I'm going to close Unreal and restart it. And that will free up this memory. And now for just wait a moment, that memory will be freed up. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, so if you have less than that, what you might find is you'll need to import the files in smaller batches because Unreal will hold on to this memory, your memory might fill up, and then you might need to restart Unreal to free up that memory, and then you can continue to import further batches of files. After importing all of that geometry, it might take a while to relaunch Unreal. It might have a lot of shaders to prepare and other things to update. So we'll just be patient and let that load. And now it's beginning to load, you can see our memory is still writing much lower than it was before. So when importing a lot of geometry, Unreal seems to hold a lot of data in memory and doesn't release it, even after it's finished importing and no longer needs it. So that's something to bear in mind. You might find you need to restart Unreal to free up that memory. In the next video, I'm going to increase the subdivision level one step further. If you're using a more traditional games development workflow and you're not using Nanite, then you might be able to work at lower subdivision levels or making more use of the polyreduce to bring down the polycount. And then you might not run into some of the memory issues that I will be demonstrating. That said, I wanted to push it a step further and really make use of Nanite in this project. So I really wanted to make sure I demonstrated the full process um, and how I managed some of these issues. So in the next video, I will be increasing the subdivision level one step further, recooking the top net, and then demonstrate using the file pattern to import the files into Unreal in batches whilst managing the memory usage.